not see it. I did not. He's lying. I did not. Oh, hi, Mark. All right, it's me. Yes, it's me. And what's good lighting this time? All right, so as by the cheap and crappy reference, you can tell that i also by the title card, I just saw the disaster artist. And as always, I am your host, the archivist. Let's get down to brass tacks here, people. <sighs> it's a good film, yes. I honestly thought I could, I should go into it with some uh, booze. Apparently, I really didn't need to. This was really hilarious look into the making of The Room, which I believe I might have heard of back then. Apparently, my world was a lot, lot smaller back then because I was still in high school and getting out of high school and going into my, basically, my second job, which is working at a mobile gas station just off of the 10 next to La Cadena. Very nice place. I don't know if that barber shop is still there. But anyway, and the restaurant, La Cadena restaurant. Apparently they have, at the, at the barber shop, they have a huge uh, coat rack full of hats, apparently because people come in and they leave their hats behind because they forget about it because they came in for the haircut. Anyway, so... I, I can't keep all these characters straight. So, the guy that played um, Mark in the movie is now playing the character Tommy Wiseau as well as the actor that plays Tommy Wiseau. And he's playing opposite his little brother. And Seth Rogen is playing another director. So, the director is playing... Or, sorry, the producer is playing the director and I hear that Mark disguised as Tommy stayed in character while doing the direct doing the directoring of this movie make it that what you will so it makes for probably one bizarre behind the scenes of the behind the scenes of the room so it's stylized it has good music it's a decent structure it shows the process of Breaking in in Hollywood is difficult. It's nigh impossible, but this guy just soldiers through with his friend. And, you know, you, you just try. You give it your all. You hope for the best. And maybe, just maybe, there we go. Just maybe, you might actually succeed. And... We see Tommy with the this childlike emotional. Uh, he acts like a child, a lot, but it's also in a very endearing way. And you have to understand how to handle people like that. You gotta have a lot of patience and a lot of understanding. Yeah, me and I, I know I deal with people who are like that. Personally and professionally, might I add. Professionally, not on YouTube. Professionally, at the job I do to pay for all this. Uh, my minor productions as they are. And uh, apparently, one of the weird things I have with this movie is that uh, Mark and his girlfriend are like, just don't quite understand. Like he, Mark gets it enough to tolerate and understand Tommy enough and to stay with Tommy to a certain point. But then he's like, well, I don't understand why he's acting like that. It's like, because he feels abandoned. Oh, I'm going to live with my girlfriend, who I believe is insisting, and that was her fucking idea, to go and live with him. And he's like, to go live with her, and he's acting like, well, why is Tommy acting like this? Because he feels abandoned. He feels abandoned that you chose your girlfriend over him. You're not seeing this through to the end. You're like, it feels like you're leaving in the middle of all this, even though technically you're not leaving the production, but you're leaving him. So, of course, it cuts to him outside Throwing those little blue uh, uh, plastic uh, free uh, um, little newspaper things, you know, throwing them around, you know, and throwing his tantrum out front of the restaurant because he feels abandoned. And, you know, and I could, I could, I could understand Mark's frustration. I can understand everyone's frustration with Tommy. But I cannot understand is why he doesn't more understand by spending so much time with Tommy as to why he doesn't get it. Like, 
when this minor thing happens, oh, and then Tommy gets upset. It's like, well, yeah, Tommy is perf is a perfectionist. He does things on a whim, and he's very childish, you know. But he has this immense passion to try and get this damn thing done because Hollywood just kept saying no to him. So and that's the only real uh, uh, gripe I have. But also with the the laughing in the theater. I didn't really think it was really fair that they did that to Tommy, narratively wise. That they could have left more of the, the the comedy at more of the like the laughing at parts, kind of more towards when it was actually kind of funny when things kind of got a little silly, which to them apparently was like a lot of the end part of the movie because now they had like enough of it and realized it's more of a a parody of life or something. It's like really the part where they're doing football in tuxes and then going cheap 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 like that's not a part to laugh at I think that's kind of giggle-ish you know they could have could have laughed then but you know whatever uh, but yeah but he's able to turn it around and say oh it's this serious drama and he keeps saying it's serious drama and says oh yeah it's a comedy my funny movie which I was planning this whole time it was a, it was a comedy he's like that that's a bit more understanding I like that of course, it kind of would be nice to have like people like afterwards, like to show a bit more of the the build up. It's like okay, and then like the pebble drops in the pond, and you see these ripples, and you see like it just spreads and spreads. It would be nice to see like, dude, I am so telling my friend about to come see this film. It is ridiculous, and, you know. Some people like you know, having seeing the word spread, you know, and to see like audiences was saying, you know, look, there's another fork. Yeah, I saw that too. And then eventually the evolution of the forks being thrown. Because then it, all we see is the theater, the 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 nightlight, not nightlight, the, the you know the infrared, not infrared, but the whatever the hell you call it, you know, when they're filming in darkness and they need everything all green, you know, and they just throw them. They see them like throwing forks at the screen. So there's no build up to that. It's just and we throw forks. So kind of comes out of nowhere. Uh, and then we see the side by side. The side by side was they did it so well that actually, even though I just saw the movie, I have I could not almost most of the time tell which screen was the movie and what scene that we just saw was the remake. It's like not remake, but like reshot. You know the the reenactment of, and it's like uh well okay, wait wait I no no that's what we just saw no wait. Is this from the written? No, is that from the original, or is this what we just saw? That kind of like got me confused because they they did it so well, and I was barely able to depict Tommy. I only had a close up because it's like, all right, no, no, no. See, that's Tommy because this guy's skin looks way too smooth. This guy's the real Tommy. His skin is a little bit more bumpy. So yeah, that's the real Tommy. That's from the room. That's from this movie, Disaster Artist. So only in that time was I able to really figure out who the heck was who the who which shot was from what movie because they did it so well. Uh, yeah, so you hear, you know, I saw two like kind of different opinions about this film, I had two different reviews about it. So it's kind of iffy about the booze, and it's like I honestly didn't need it. I honestly didn't. And I got brain freeze at one point. So I'm like this uh, during this one part where he starts doing Shakespeare in the in the. In the restaurant to that director to try and get him to put him in a part. Anyway, so uh, so yeah, I recommend it. Much like the movie because it's just so weird. And they say uh, truth is stranger than fiction. Disaster artist is could not be a better metaphor for that phrase. Than anything else in the universe. Uh, so. <laughs> uh, so that's about it. Uh, I was acting. This was great. I believed everyone. Even Tommy. Was acting. And even... Mark's acting. And the other Mark's acting. So, yes. 
I I love it. Oh, and be sure to stay for the after credits because almost everyone left, and like a small handful of people stay behind. Of a scene between uh, uh, the two Tommies, basically, because one's the real Tommy, and one's the the imposter Tommy that's being played by Mark in the film, and he's like hassling him, like, "Why are you just standing there, You're acting all alone? I'm just standing here. Leave me alone." So it's a good little banter. <laughs> Who are these people? Who's Mark's crazy? Weird people. Mark's, Mark's weird friends. Or these weird people Mark knows. So, that's about it. That's that's all I could say. Um, it's definitely inspired me. It Personally, it hit me uh, kind of more on a personal note on some levels. That this is kind of like what I want to do. This is, this is the perfect platform. Um, not that part. No, sorry. Wrong, wrong sentences in the wrong place. This movie inspires people like me to use the perfect platform for the independent artist. This, you're, what you're watching right now, this is an independent artist where anybody in the world can watch this, you know? I gain popularity without having a producer, a makeup crew, an entire corporation having to do this on a whim if need be, you know? It's like they don't have to believe in it, you know, to a certain extent to allow it. It's just me, this camera, and your attention. You know, and that's all it is. It's a production crew of one. This is why my productions are sh so shitty. And, you know, it could happen. The Nostalgia Critic. YouTube is going on for 10 years. Him and everybody else, the, the other reviewers of the internet, you know, the early on guys, you know, if you got a gig and you're good at it, you keep going... And look what he's managed to do. Look what all the other people on Channel Awesome. And it, what, started out as that guy with the glasses channel, I believe is what it was, and Angry Video Game Nerd, and Lean Cara, uh, the top of the fourth wall, you know, and Cinema Snob, you know. These are just guys in their fuck basements, garages, their own rooms. I have, I'm in, I'm in shooting all the shit in my room, and in a park, and in my car, you know. This isn't high production value. This isn't, oh, well, what, you think if I parked here on purpose to get good lighting? No, this is all just happenstance that I got good lighting. So you can see my face for once. You know? There's no pre-production. And, and the only person stopping you is you. And that's it. So, yes, this movie inspires me on some levels to use this perfect platform of the independent artist the absolute independent artist of the production crew of one you know Sundance is good Sundance is like a good middle because then it's not a big corporation it's one of the smaller units that can be shown to a decent sized audience and thus get exposure and thus go on you know it's going to be a while before I get to Sundance I would like to get to Sundance but right now, this is a good platform. This this shows me, this extends me to everybody on the planet. Okay, maybe not China, according to my friend's uh, conversations. But yes, this gets me to a wide audience as well. So it's a perfect platform of, again, I keep repeating myself, of the independent artist. So that's it. Before I repeat myself again. Uh, Take care, and it's almost New Year's, and Christmas and New Year's soon, so have a good Christmas. I say that because that's what I choose to say. I don't care what the marketing department says. And a Happy New Year's. So, as always, kids, what is line? <laughs>